we will get started then. Okay, so good morning. Hey, everybody. Um, Yvonne is our newest recruit this week, and she had some questions about insurance, so I got on an insurance tangent to start the call, but today we're talking about business names. We're talking about LLCs and how to get all that kind of started, how to work through that process, and I that's what we should be talking about in week nine if you've been going through but it's also good anytime you're getting started just to talk about business names and LLCs and how we're gonna set things up so I started a new company yesterday and yes I will give you all the info on the retreat Glenn yes okay so I started a new business yesterday that makes my eighth LLC some people have kids I have LLCs and tenants so the reason I started this new LLC out of all of my companies it's very important that you talk to your accountant when you start to name your company when you start to decide if this is going to be an LLC or an S Corp or a C Corp or what the plan is going to be all right talk to your accountant you might want to talk to your attorney also, but I know you want to talk to your accountant. My accountant, Lindsay, she did a talk with us, I think three weeks ago, kind of on taxes and stuff. That really comes into play when we talk about naming your company, all right? So the first thing everybody probably wants to do is get an LLC. They're the easiest to start, they're the easiest to file taxes on, and you can start adding in LLCs under that LLC, or you can have each LLC stand as its own company. But when you start an LLC, the first question the government is going to ask you is, do you want to be taxed as an S Corp or a C Corp? And you're like, no, 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 I want to be an LLC. I don't want to be an S Corp or a C Corp. They have to tax you based on whether or not you're an S Corp or a C Corp, even if you're an LLC. All right. The best way to remember which is which and which way you want to be taxed, an S Corp is self-taxed. All right, so everything that my LLC makes flows through to my self, Whitney Nicely's taxes. All right, it flows through. If you set your LLC up or if you set up a C Corp, and this is just very basic stuff, the C Corp is taxed like a corporation. C Corp, C Corporation. Okay, the corporation pays its own taxes. So the corporation if it makes money it pays its own taxes and then it pays me now i pay taxes on what the company paid me all right but in an s corp llc or in an s corp all of the money from the llc whether or not it comes into my personal account or not all comes down to my personal taxes all right so do you want all the money to flow into your taxes and you pay on that or do you want each company to pay their own taxes? That is the nuts and bolts. That is the short and sweet of how I can remember what's an S Corp and what's a C Corp. Just so you know, all of mine are S Corps. Eight LLCs flow straight into my taxes. All right. And if you have private money, if you're borrowing money from somebody to do some fix and flips or to do some long term buy and holds or whatever it is you're borrowing money from, or for LLCs in Tennessee and I think in Georgia in most states they're pretty cheap and it may be cheaper to start an LLC with two or three or eight or ten partners than to form a partnership corporation all right talk to your accountant and your attorney on that though because if you own 25% of an LLC or you own 100% of an LLC you still need to know how that's going to flow to your taxes all right and if you're borrowing money if you're using private money i would really suggest um, based on a general overview of who we have and who we're working with that you set up an LLC each time you borrow money from somebody I don't want you to be an expert in setting up LLCs. I want you to have an attorney or an accountant on your team who fully understands what's going on and let them be the expert to setting that up. Now, let's talk about naming your LLC because my first LLC, I decided in July 
June. I decided in June that Tyler and I were going to buy houses. My brother and I were going to buy houses, okay? And we went to an auction and we bought a house. Except we didn't have a company, so we had to put in our personal names. That's okay if you're doing one or two or maybe even three houses a year, but when you start hammering out one, two, three a month, you really need an LLC for insurance purposes, for tax purposes, for liability, for everything. You need to start funneling those things into an LLC or an S Corp or a C Corp, whatever you want. But if you're doing one or two a year, it may be okay to leave it in your personal name. Now, I have a friend, his name is Tommy Phillips. He's in Knoxville and he is a old and slow kind of investor. He pays cash and he doesn't have a single LLC. He puts everything in his name or is in his wife's name and that's the way he wants to do it. And he's probably got an insane amount of real estate in his personal name, which would keep me up at night, but he's okay with it. His attorney is okay with it. His accountant is okay with it. He wants it all super simple. He doesn't want to have all these different companies doing all these different things. So you can do it. You can be a millionaire and keep everything in your name. I don't recommend that. I really, really recommend the LLCs. And I recommend that you have an LLC in the state that you are investing in. Okay, so the LLC that I created yesterday was for Georgia properties. Nothing is going in that LLC unless it is land in Georgia. All right, my first LLC that Tyler and I created, we started buying houses, we were putting in our personal name. In June we bought a house, in July we bought a house, in August we bought a house, and then in August we also sold a house. So in September, we finally decided on a name. All right. It took us June, July, August, and September to decide on a name so that we could go to the bank and get a bank account and get an EIN number from the IRS and actually make everything official instead of using our socials for everything. All right. So if you can't come up with a name like that, totally fine. It took me four months to name my first company. All right. And it was mine and Tyler's company. And a lot of times when people start companies, they either name it after themselves or they name it after their kids or they name it after their um, location or they name it something that means something to them. You could name it, um, you know, you probably can't name it We Buy Houses. I think that one's trademarked already. But you could name it, you know, We Buy Dandridge Houses or We Buy Knoxville Houses or um, Kevin and Marna use Double Dog Properties. Uh, somebody else, um, Amy and Edison, they have the Next Path LLC. Like, you can get really creative in your LLC. So, my first LLC, Tyler and I named it A to Z Properties. And we thought that was really clever because we would buy anything from A to Z. It also happened that my dog's name is Abby and Tyler's dog's name is Zinc. So, it's really named after our children. Okay, Abby to Zinc properties. <laughs> if something happens to me and Tyler, Abby and Zinc are going to be the richest dogs in Knoxville. That's how we named our first company. The company that I named yesterday, Lindsay and I, my accountant and I, we were sitting down and we were trying to decide because this is number eight. We were trying to decide what we could name it that didn't have the same initials as one of my other companies. All right, because I'll send her an email and I'll be like, hey, WBH did this, A to Z did that, EPH did this, uh, Boone did that, Lamp like all of my companies, and we use shorthand. We'll talk about WBH, Whitney Buys Houses. We'll talk about um, NDA, which is a non disclosure agreement, except when we're talking to me, it's nicely done auctions as one of my LLCs. So we decided to name my Georgia company my Georgia investment company, which is the same thing as A to Z, except A to Z is for Tennessee houses that I own. My new company is Whitney Properties GA LLC. Because those are houses that I'm buying in Georgia. I was in Florida for two weeks in February and I wanted so bad to buy some houses while we were there. I just wasn't there long enough to, you know, mail letters, do Craigslist posts, 
and vacation and talk to sellers. So next year I'm going for the whole month and y'all are welcome to come. I'm going to do a couple different VIP events while we're in Florida next February. But anyway, so we decided on Whitney Properties GA LLC. That way when I go to Florida, I can have Whitney Properties FL LLC. And when I buy something, you know, by myself in Tennessee, I can have Whitney Properties TN LLC. And it's, it's a holding company. It is for my investments. All right. So Whitney Buys Houses is my real estate firm. It's also the LLC that signs all my contracts. When I go to start to talk to a seller, I am going on behalf of Whitney Buys Houses. As a broker, as an investor, I'm going as Whitney Buys Houses LLC. And I'm going to put it out on the market as Whitney Buys Houses. And then when I decide, you know, if I put it out there and somebody comes and they pay me cash and it goes away and I do an assignment fee, then it stays in Whitney Buys Houses. If somebody comes through and they give me $15,000, and I decide to take it and keep it on a lease option, then Whitney Buys Houses transfers that contract to A to Z Properties if it's in Tennessee, all right? And then A to Z Properties is my holding company. And so as long as I have that house for a year, for 10 years, for 30 years, it's gonna be titled in A to Z LLC, A to Z Properties LLC, and it's gonna stay in A to Z Properties. It's gonna be on A to Z's tax, Role. It's going to be property tax role and income tax role. It's going to be on A to Z's uh, insurance role. It's going to be on A to Z's P&L statement. It's going to be on everything A to Z. All right. So A to Z is my long-term hold investment LLC. Whitney Buys Houses is my short-term. And that's very important because if I get a house and I turn it and burn it in that's probably a bad phrase when we talk about real estate, but if I, if I bring it in and I sell it real fast or I get an assignment fee or I don't stay in the middle of it, I just get, you know, a option fee and then I'm out. I don't keep it forever, ever, and amen. It doesn't go on my insurance. It doesn't go on my property taxes. Then I have a short-term capital gains tax that I have to pay on that. But everything in Whitney Buys Houses is on a short-term capital gains tax everything in A to Z is a long-term play, all right? So right now, you don't really need two LLCs. Right now, you need one. When you start adding a hold, a long-term, a lease option, an owner finance, when you start doing one of those every week or two or three a month or even one a month and you turn around and you've got 10, then it might be that you start to feel the need to have a short term for the ones that just come and go. They just come and go. They come in, you get an assignment, and they go back out. You don't keep them. But to start with, get you one LLC, and you can use it for both, for quicks and for longs. If you're an agent you and you don't own your own firm, then anytime somebody gives you money as an option fee, you had to put it in your escrow account. So make sure when you're investing and you have a license that you're still following all the real real estate rules. And when you move somebody in, then that escrow account turns into an option fee and then you get to put it in your checking account. But if you have questions about that and you're an agent, let me know. We'll talk through that on a different deal. Um, most people are not agents, so I don't want to confuse you. Don't get your license. It's a lot of extra <laughs> that you have to do. Uh, Glenn wants to know how many properties you put under one LLC. That is going to be on probably on your insurance agent. My agent doesn't like to have more than a million dollars in any policy all right because my insurance coverage goes up to a million bucks so he doesn't want me to have five million dollars worth of assets 
if I'm only covered for a million dollars. So if you get, you know, in California, you could buy two or three houses and hit a million dollars, and then you'd need a new LLC. In Tennessee, I can buy 10 $100,000 houses. I have some cheaper than that. So I can have 10 or 12 or 15 all in one LLC. Talk to your insurance agent about that to decide how much risk you're willing to put in one LLC. And the reason that that becomes important is if you have one tenant and something goes bad and they sue you, if all of your properties are in one LLC, then they can sue that LLC and take all of it. If you have each property in its own LLC, like all of my apartments are in their very own LLC, just because we have so much turnover. We have so many people coming and going that I don't want them to easily access all of my other holdings in case they get mad because I won't let them have their dog or something. Um, your leases will help you cover that. That says, uh, you know, if, mm, what's it called? Indemnification. In your lease, you should have a paragraph that says that your tenant Hold you will, will indemnify you in court and stand beside you in court that says that you didn't do anything on purpose to hurt them or their property or their friends, okay? And when I explain the indemnification paragraph to my tenants or to my tenant buyers, I always use the example that says, you know, if you have a wild and crazy party out here on 4th of July or Friday or New Year's Eve or whenever it is you feel like having a wild and crazy party and one of your buddies or your brother-in-law or somebody trips off the porch or falls in a hole that your dog dug and they break their ankle or something, you're going to indemnify me in court that says, I didn't put that hole there on purpose. I didn't do this on purpose so that your guest got hurt. All right. Now there's crazy people out there and the best you can do is to screen people and to, you know, get enough money from them up front and to really have a good understanding with them that they're not going to sue you, but nothing says that they're not going to get in a bond and then turn around and sue you. All right, so that's why you need to be working with an attorney on these contracts because the attorney is going to know all the bad stuff that can happen and how to protect you from that. All right, so you can have as many properties as you want to in one LLC, but I would really start to encourage you when you start to get 10 or 15 that you start to think about getting another LLC just so that you have a clear division in this LLC owns this properties, this one owns those properties, and they may, both LLCs may be owned by the same person, but you can't jump from one LLC to the next. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? The LLCs are a protection for you. You also have your insurance agent that's going to be protecting you. You have your attorney that's going to be protecting you. I don't want you to do anything online with any online insurance agents or online um, legal forms. I want you to have a person because if and when something bad does happen, I want you to have that person that you can go to and say, help me. All right. And I don't want to scare anybody. But y'all know we live in a crazy world, right? And out of all the deals that I've done, I've had that one house in Gatlinburg that ever caught on fire, and they're basically working that out amongst themselves. Um, I'm doing the paperwork for them, but not anything like amazing. But that's the only property that I've had that had a really bad situation. Most of the time, if I get a property back, I get it back in better shape than when I sold it out the first time. And I have tenants, I have tenants that call me, they text me. I had one lady call me in a panic on Saturday because Saturday was the 4th and rent is due on the 5th. And she was panicked because she realized that she didn't put her rent in 
and she wanted to know, you know, what she could do and blah, blah, blah. And she'd go ahead and pay the 10% late fee, but she didn't want me to kick her out because she was late and all this stuff. When people give you big money, they give you big option fees and they're working to improve their credit, you're not going to get the same quality people moving into your house as if you were doing a regular rental program. All right, the people, their mindset is different. Their attention to detail is different. Their goals are different and they make better tenants. They make better tenant buyers. They make better tenants. They take care of your stuff and they call you apologizing instead of you calling and harassing them. Totally different when we talk about tenant buyers. The more money they put down, the more willing that they're, the, the more likely that they're going to not give you any trouble and buy the house. And if they don't buy the house, then they're gonna call and apologize and let you know what has happened and wish you the best. I'm getting a house back in April that I just sold in, I think, October. I did a video on it. I met the woman at seven o'clock in the morning in October, no makeup, came from the gym, got 5,800 bucks, and I was done for the day. And she's already leaving in April. Life happens, she's leaving. I'll get somebody else to give me five or 10,000 to move into it and start making those payments. She called me apologizing that she was gonna have to leave. Totally different when we talk about tenant buyers versus regular renters. Okay, let me see what else I have about LLCs. Naming your company. Also, okay, when we talk about naming your company. So I told you that, my new company that I made yesterday is in Georgia. So to find out if my name was available, we went to the Georgia Secretary of State. Business search, business name. I wanted Whitney Properties. But two other people already own Whitney Properties. And look at this. One is Whitney Properties LLC, and they have a L period, L period, C period. And the other one is Whitney Properties LLC with no periods. How confusing is that? I bet these people, and one's in Marietta, one's in Macon, I bet these people get tons of wrong letters in the mail. They probably get their taxes screwed up. They probably get their contracts screwed up. There's so many reasons why this would drive me crazy, okay? The only difference, Whitney Properties, LLC, L period, C period, L period, L period, C period versus LLC. That is crazy, all right? That would drive me insane. So we went through here and we did this, GA right? Because now we're thinking that we're going to take over the world and I'm going to need a Whitney Properties. No data found, all right? That's because we haven't submitted it yet. By Friday, yesterday was payroll day, so Lindsay didn't have time to start the company. By Friday, when you type in Whitney Properties GA, it'll come up for me, all right? And all you do is go to your state's Secretary of State's website. Like, we can do this for any state. Let's do Florida, Secretary of State. Search for companies, entity name. These are all of the companies in Florida that kind of match Whitney Properties. Whitney Racing, Whitney Real Estate, Whitney Realty, Whitney Road, Whitney's LLC, all right? Nothing in here says Whitney Properties. So I can get Whitney Properties FL, which is good for my brain to know what 
state we're talking about so I know which property we're talking about. And you can do this anywhere. You can go to, let's do California. California Secretary of State. All right, uh, they've moved their website. It's now here. Search criteria. Let's look for, uh, let's do Whitney Properties. Search by name. All right, now we're in California. There is a The Whitney Properties Corporation mm, that's not active, and then we have Whitney Properties Inc. So I could have Whitney Properties CA LLC in California. And whatever name you want, all right? Um, so one thing that I like to do, let's do Arizona real quick. Arizona Secretary of State. If I had, that's a Wikipedia article. Um, if I'd stuck to A to Z, and let's say that I was doing A to Z Properties, Georgia. I could do that. I don't have to have Whitney Properties G GA. I could do A to Z Properties GA. But I didn't think about this at the time. When I let's look at corporations. Um, when I do anything with AZ properties, everything comes up in Arizona. So much stuff. Arizona's website is not as friendly as everybody else's. Somewhere in here, you have to be able to search to find in your state what's going on. 